Welcome here inside Davis Wade Stadium. We are live. I'm Tom Ebel, joined by Courtney Robb. That's a lot sad. A lot more sad in here than I think we thought it was going we to be. We were expecting a much different outcome, I must say. But at the end of the day, one of these teams had to be the victor. That's back. It's football. It's the way the game goes. Unfortunately, it wasn't exactly the one that we wanted or were hoping for. <laughs> or we thought. Or we honest. thought. Um, so I guess we should just get right into why we didn't think that way. Um, personally speaking, I just felt like I wasn't, and it was kind of the thing. We just weren't seeing that kind of explosive offense from the Bulldogs that typically we're used to seeing and that we've expected and had such high hopes for. And I think there was just so much anticipation and pressure going into today's game that everything just felt so much heavier when it didn't go the way that everyone was expecting it to. That's right. And so for those of you who weren't here about, what, an hour and a half ago in the yeah. game ended at Davis Wade, we're, of course, talking about Mississippi State taking on the Florida Gators and old head coach Dan Mullen. So we'll go to those highlights right now for you. Man, it was electric here in Starkville all day long. And there he is wearing the orange and blue Dan Mullen back in his own stomping grounds, meeting up with head coach Joe Moorhead pregame, shaking hands then once the – Pre-game, right before kickoff started to happen, all the friendship was out the window. Moorhead and the players hyped up for kickoff. Florida and Davis Wade, the next time these two will meet each other is 2025. So early on, I mean, the entire first half was an absolute slugfest. Florida, Philippe Franks trying to get something going. He'd be sacked by Gary Green early on. And there really wasn't much going on for each team offensively. And Harris Williams showing off the hurdle here for a few minutes. I mean, it's a... That was about the most exciting play we got out of the first half, Courtney. Right. And that would lead to a Jace Christman field goal. And it'd be another Jace Christman field goal. And it'd just be a field goal fest and a rock fight throughout the first half. So the first half would be 6-3 to three, Mississippi State going in with the lead. And although it wasn't what we thought, it, it, it was okay. It was okay. Jackie Sherrill back on to watch the Bulldogs. He was honored in the second quarter. But Franks picked off by Chan Dantzler in the second half. That would be some momentum for Mississippi State. It wouldn't lead to any points, though. A big play for the Bulldogs left off the board was a huge Osiris Mitchell drop. But the Florida Gators got on the board quick. Trick play to Kadarius Toney, to uh, Morale Stevens. The Gators would score a touchdown. So that touchdown was reminiscent of the Georgia game. So it was 13-6, last chance for Mississippi State. Mythic Fitzgerald to Dedrick Thomas. That got the drive going, got them across midfield. And then the last play of the game for Mississippi State. On a fourth down, Nick Fitzgerald just hit by a blitz right up the middle. No one touched the guy, walked right in. It was a sack. Dan Mullen walks out of Starkville with the win, 13-6 to over Mississippi State. Courtney, you alluded to a little bit, but it wasn't how we expected. And Joe Moorhead and the guy said after the game, they're disappointed, and they should, and they agree that they sh you should right. be disappointed. Exactly. Here's what they said after the game. Myself included and the team included, I wouldn't say head down, but you know certainly not where we want to be at this point in the season. You know we're three and two after five games. Uh, you know we got a big game here at home versus Auburn. You know before the bye week, and we got to figure a way to, you know, get the thing right, rally together, and, and get this thing headed in the right direction. I go still like the, um, you know, those two teams from the ACC East haven't went into the um, West Division yet. So you know just got to stay positive. You know we we love this game, it's rough. No one ever said it was gonna be easy, so. Just got to keep moving forward. Uh, yeah, we've been playing well. Definitely been playing well. Uh, as, a, as a quarterback, I'll, uh, I'll take all that. I'll show that blame. Uh, absolutely. I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not playing up to par by any means. So, uh, you know, we're going to deal with this, look at the film, get better from it, keep working. To the seniors, the people in the community, you know, as bad as we wanted to win this game, you know, it happened. You know, um, we just got to move forward. Aversion strike, you know, two losses back to back. That's a lot of adversity hitting us right now. But, you know, with us, you know, the team I know we have, the guys I know we have on this team, we're going to bounce back from this adversity. You know, we're going to all respond. So. so, Joe Moorhead said after the game today that. This is probably the worst two-game stretch of offensive football that he's been a part of during his coaching career. It's 13 points in two SEC games for Mississippi State. Gary Green, still hopeful. 
the two losses to SEC East teams. He said their goal is still in sight to get an SEC West win, but the Bulldogs will have to figure out something pretty quick with Auburn coming into town next week. Yeah, Tom, I definitely agree. I think when you looked at Fitzgerald, too, on the field, you could definitely see that pressure coming at him of just, like, him trying to figure out where to put the ball because his pocket was quickly disassembling there. And so he, he was trying to find an out, and a lot of those passes, they were just kind of, quick flings that weren't in the right spot to hit his receivers and certain things just didn't get passed off the right way. I think that he would have wanted to. And he even said he wasn't hitting, you know, his passes and everything like he, he wasn't living up to the standard and the expectation there. And I think that was a big part of it today. Yeah, so big win for Florida, big loss for Mississippi State. We'll hear from head coach Dan Mullen coming up after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be back from Davis Wade. Welcome back here to WCBI Sports. We're live inside Davis Wade Stadium. Well, we talked about it just a moment ago, Courtney. Right. I mean, none of us expected this, I don't think. No, it was completely unexpected. But I think getting on, an important thing to win is it wasn't necessarily a good win for Florida either. But I mean, it's a big win over a ranked Mississippi right. State. Right. It just it hits, a it hits Mississippi State a little bit harder. That's right. And the big storyline was Dan Mullen returning to Starkville. Dan Mullen said in the post game press conference tonight this might be the last time he's ever in Davis Wade Stadium. He spoke a little bit after the game about what this win meant for him. It's pretty special for me. You know, I mean, is um, to come in here. I, you know, I don't. That was probably the last time I'm ever in the stadium. You know, I mean, it, 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 you know, with how the SEC works, I mean, it, it, I, I, you know, so to, to, to finish, uh, this is my last last time ever being at Davis Wade Stadium to finish with a win, and, and um, you know, I mean, I don't freak everybody out, but it was like 14 years, you know, I, <coughs> that's a long time from now. After the game tonight, we saw Dan Mullen talking up with some of the old players he used to coach not even a year ago. Yeah. And so it was an emotional game. We'll see if Mississippi State can put in the rearview mirror and get ready for Auburn. But around the SEC, Ole Miss and LSU are playing right now. At last check, LSU is up 28-6 to on the Rebels. We'll be recapping Ole Miss's time in Baton Rouge. Coming up with you tomorrow yeah. on WCBI Sports. And a little bit earlier today, Alabama just keeps on winning, defeating UL Lafayette 56-14. to Alabama looks like a wrecking crew that just isn't going to stop at this point. You really can't stop that Crimson Tide, and that's pretty much... The only thing you can say about it in summation, they're unstoppable this season. It's adding up to that, and we'll be seeing Alabama take on Mississippi State in November. But State's got a lot of, a lot of things to, to fix before we get to that point. But for now, reporting here inside Davis Wade, Tom Ebel, Courtney Robb for WCBI Sports. 